Hello, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Claire. I am a professional artist based in Melbourne, Australia. And on my channel, I just share what's happening in my studio and some, you know, art content. <laughs> uh, however, today is actually a little bit different. Today's um, video is actually going to be part travel vlog, part art talk, but more travel, less art. Uh, so I actually went away on holiday with my partner recently and I filmed quite a bit of footage and I thought that you guys would like to have a little look at where we went uh, and the things that we did. Uh, there is a little bit of art content as well because I did take my sketchbook with me and towards the end of the video I will do a flip through of my sketchbook and some of the things that I've been creating since I've returned um, and also when I was there. But uh, if you're not interested in travel stuff and seeing where I went on holiday, just skip towards the end of the, the video and there'll be more art content. But uh, to start with, I thought it'd be nice to sort of take you through where we went. So my partner Trent and I went on a holiday for a week up to far north Queensland, uh, specifically to Cairns, and it was so nice. So a little bit of geography for those not familiar. Uh, I am down in Melbourne, so obviously this is a map of Australia. I am down in the south of Australia, in Melbourne, in Victoria, and uh, down here in Melbourne we have a very sort of mild climate. Um, summers do get a bit hot sometimes, but generally speaking we have fairly mild weather. And so we travelled up to uh, Cairns, which is in the far north of Queensland. Uh, it's about three and a half hours flight from Melbourne to get there and this area of Australia is very very tropical so it is a tropical rainforest very hot very humid and totally different environment to what we are used to down in Melbourne we rented a little Airbnb apartment to stay in so this is it here it's a very cute little one-bedroom bungalow out the back of a um, the guy that owned it his house was out the front and we were at the back and it was lovely it was exactly what we needed it was in a little town called Bacard's Beach which is about 15 minutes out of the city of Cairns um, my partner and I are very introverted people we really don't like the hustle and bustle of cities um, we don't like going out out to dinner like you know in really noisy places and things like that so we decided to stay a little bit out of the city um, and it worked really well we we rented a car so that we could travel around as much as we wanted and so we were able to just drive you know all over the place and see a lot of the cans and fun of queensland um even though we weren't actually in the main city part and so yeah this place was so nice this is the furthest north that both Trent and I have been to. I've been up in Queensland a few times, obviously, but I've never been quite this far north up in Australia. So it is a totally different environment. And when I tell you that it is humid, it is humid. Like the air smacks you in the face when you get off the plane. It is so hot and muggy and it's just totally not used to it. Um, so a few of the things that we did, um, the first day we had there, we actually went to a crocodile park. So up in far north Queensland, uh, crocodiles are as common as pigeons are in a city. <laughs> so we thought that it would be a good idea to sort of go and visit a crocodile park to start with, to have a bit of a look at what they, you know, what's involved and, you know, how much, for, you know, we really need to be careful about crocodiles. And we discovered that, yes, you do have to be careful of pretty much every body of water, including the ocean, um, you know, rivers, ponds, lakes, anywhere, there's a good chance there's a croc in it. So um, we had um, a really good morning at this um, crocodile park and it had a few other like little displays of animals and things like this little cute snake guy. So that was a really good morning and we then headed up the coast a bit further to Port Douglas. We just spent the day travelling around which was a really good part of having a hire car. We could just sort of uh, travel around wherever we wanted to um, and just, you know, discover things. So this was actually a beach called Pebbly Beach. You know, three guesses, guesses as to why it's called Pebbly Beach. Um, and it's just outside of Port Douglas. And so we sat down here for a while and I did some sketching. I just took a simple sketchbook with some watercolours and pencils with me because I knew that I wanted to record the holiday. So um, I just did a bit of sketching. But honestly, it is so beautiful up here. The weather was just perfect. It was warm, not too hot. Um, and so the second day, I think this is the second day. Yeah, I actually missed a day. There's a day in between these two where we actually went on a fishing charter. 
Um, I didn't record much of that fishing charter because we were on a boat with seven other people and I didn't really want to be recording footage that, you know, I didn't have permission from them to show. So we did have a great day on the fishing charter. We caught lots of fish. It was awesome. <laughs> the next day we went um, driving around again. This is a place called Barren Gorge which was up on top of um, a mountain. I can't remember the name of the town that's on top of there, but um, maybe it will come to me later. There's a little market village on top of the mountain that was really pretty. Um, this is just one of the many beautiful beaches. Uh, Fitzroy Island. This is somewhere that we visited as well. We took a day trip to Fitzroy Island. You need to catch a ferry from Cairns. It takes about 45 minutes to get to this island. You can actually stay on the island, but we weren't. I think if I come back to Cairns, I think I will definitely stay on this island at the resort. Uh, yeah, that's me snorkeling. Um, <laughs> because it was so beautiful and I was really looking forward to this. I absolutely love snorkeling and I haven't done it in many, many, many years. So I was like right in there in the water. Um, my partner Trent, not so much of a fan of snorkeling. So he stayed on land and, you know, took some videos and stuff for me. But here is a bit of footage of the Great Barrier Reef. So Fitzroy Island and Cairns, it, it's pretty much right on the Great Barrier Reef. And so this, this footage that I'm terribly taking is about like three meters off the, the, the beach and it's like straight into reef. Um, <laughs> I was, I only had my iPhone with me. I don't have a GoPro, but my iPhone does have like a waterproof casing in it. So I was able to take it underwater to film, but I couldn't see the screen at all. I just had to kind of guess which direction I was pointing it in and whether it was even recording but, you know, you kind of get a bit of an idea and the colours that you see here are like nothing compared to what they are in reality. They are so beautiful and the water is so warm. It's like swimming in a bathtub. It is so nice. I could have stayed in there all day. But, um, but yeah, I had a really good time snorkeling around and I tried to get as much good footage as I could because I knew that I'd want to use some of this as inspiration for artworks and things later on. Um, but yeah, the, the footage didn't really end up as good as I, I had hoped, <laughs> but it was lots and lots of fun. And so uh, come some of the other things you can do in Fitzroy Island is there's a couple of bushwalks. Um, there is like a glass bottom boat that you can go around on. There's a restaurant. There's of course the resort that you can actually stay in, but the island itself just for a day trip is just really, really pretty. Um, and so as soon as I got back from that day trip, I decided to do sort of just get some of my inspiration down on paper in my notebook and my sketchbook straight away. Uh, I, as I said earlier, I only had a fairly small selection of watercolours with me. Um, most of them Daniel Smith watercolours, the collection that I'm building. <laughs> um, and I also, I'm using some ink tents watercolour pencils as well, just to add in some details. I will show you um, pages of this sketchbook later on in the video. So towards the end of the video, I will do a flip through and show you all the things that I did paint while I was there. So we were in Cairns for a total of five nights, six days. Um, and the weather was really nice up until the last day. This was the last day where it absolutely poured down. So we were here in February and that's sort of towards the end of the wet season. And so we were actually quite lucky with the weather. We only had this like the last day that we were there, it started to rain. Every other day it was nice, but even though it's pouring with rain, it's still like 28, 29 degrees Celsius. So it's not cold. <laughs> and when it does stop raining, the moisture sort of evaporates off you within like, you know, half an hour. So we didn't really mind, but we weren't leaving. Uh, this was the day that we left, but our flight didn't leave till 6.30 at night. So we kind of had the whole day still to explore. So we ended up traveling back up to Port Douglas and a little bit past Port Douglas and we decided to visit the Daintree Rainforest. So this is the oldest rainforest in the world, um, something like 130 billion years old or something ridiculous. Um, it is so pretty. Um, because of all the rain, 
this river was really, really flooded and really rushing fast. Normally you can actually swim. There's like a swimming hole that you can get down into and swim in this river just um, to the right here where I'm panning. You can get in the water there. Yep, this part here. You can normally swim here, but unfortunately because the the river was flowing a bit too hard on this day and so the park rangers don't let you swim if it's if it's this rough so um otherwise i would have jumped in yeah we had a really great trip it was um, it wasn't a work holiday, it was just a relaxing holiday, which is something that we hadn't done with just the two of us for a while, and we really enjoyed it, and I would love to go back. Um, my partner Trent wasn't so much of a fan of the hot weather, he doesn't really handle the hot weather as well as I do, I really didn't mind it at all, but as long as he could get into the air conditioning every now and then, he was okay, but yeah, most of the time he was a bit, you know, a bit over the heat, which, you know, fair enough, but... I loved it. I thought it was beautiful and I cannot wait to come back again. I think I will definitely be planning a trip back up here in the, the future. So as promised, here is a bit of a flick through of my sketchbook that I took with me uh, on holiday. So this is, I don't even remember the name of the sketchbook. It's really not that, you know, greater quality book. It's definitely not built for watercolour or too much wet media. It does buckle quite easily, but it was a really good sketchbook for me to take. It was very no pressure, very, you know, easy to sort of just open up and scribble in. Um, I was using mostly, as I mentioned earlier, Daniel Smith watercolours and ink tents watercolour pencils. And yeah, it was, yeah, just a bit of a relaxing sort of, you know, usually at the end of the day, we'd have, you know, a couple of drinks on the veranda and I'd sit there and, you know, sketch some of the things that we did. I did do a little bit of sketching on location, but um, it was quite hot in the sun. So um, a few of the places that we sort of stopped along the way, um, we couldn't really sit in the sun for too long because it was just, yeah, we'd end up getting a bit burnt and not very comfortable. So yeah, these are just some really loose inspiration type of sketches that I did in watercolour. Lots of coral, lots of um, scenes from the trip. And uh, yeah, I actually really like this one. I think this is um, really pretty and I'm actually thinking about maybe scanning it and doing a print. I'm not sure. It depends on how well this sort of paper scans. Uh, and here we are jumping to some of the stuff I've done so far since being home. So again, these are just some little watercolours. Uh, I think there's a five by seven inches uh, some watercolours inspired by some of the photos that I took of the coral. Just trying to get myself used to the the forms and the shapes and um, how the coral sort of sits and clumps together before I sort of uh, venture on to doing some larger pieces. And um, I've also been doing some studies and things in my large A3 Moleskine sketchbook as well. These are um, acrylic gouache studies that, um, again, I've just done based on some photos that I took, uh, really trying to stylize and loosen up the shapes a bit. So I'm obviously not trying to paint realism here. I'm just trying to get the shapes and some patterns and get familiar with what coral looks like painted. Um, there's some of these ones I'm quite happy with. I think the colours that I've used in these two pictures or these two studies are a little bit too intense for what I'm wanting to produce when it comes to painting on canvas. I kind of need to mute down the colours a little bit. They're, um, it's nice, it's just a little bit over the top. Um, these are also watercolours. Uh, this one here was, I think actually it might be ink and watercolour actually come to think of it and yeah, the other one is the same. Uh, this is a based on a photo that I took at the Daintree on the last day. Uh, these, this, that little fish one on the side is just a really loose <laughs> interpretation of some fish swirling around and then some other little coral studies based on some photos that I found on the internet again in watercolour. Just trying to get a feel for it and sort of work out you know, how, how am I going to paint coral? So these sort of sketches and things were done in the first sort of few days after I returned home. Hi, 
So I'm back at my studio after going on holiday and starting to get back into the swing of things, kind of. Um, now I wanted to, I've only been back from holiday for like less than a week, but I did want to show you a few things that I've been working on in the studio based on the inspiration that I had while I was on holiday, uh, because I was in the studio um, a little bit last week. It's now Monday. Uh, we returned last Wednesday, and so I did pop into the studio on um, Friday, Thursday, Friday, I think, and started, you know, processing some of the stuff that I'd been um, inspired by while away in far north Queensland. Um, so I do want to produce a bit of a series of artworks based on that holiday, um, using a lot, a few different um, areas of inspiration. Because of course there is the Barrier Reef and like the coral and the water, but then there's also the rainforest side of things that I do want to. Um, that create a bit of a collection of as well. But at the moment, I'm still focusing a little bit on the coral stuff. And I'm just trying to work out how I want to paint that. And the reason why I say that is because um, I kind of, I've been feeling in the last probably two years or so that I have been shifting away from the uh, style of art that I was doing previously. Um, about, oh no, probably three, maybe four or five years ago even, um, I was painting very, very abstract, expressive um, artworks. And I'll pop a few of those up on the screen in case you're not familiar with them. But um, back when I was painting these, I actually had a lot of people commenting and saying that these paintings reminded them of coral reefs and of that sort of environment when actually it wasn't. It was actually based on the forest and the bush surrounding my home um, and the mist that was coming off the mountains during winter. Um, but I found it interesting that a lot of people interpreted that as coral and underwater scenes. And so when it comes to painting, now that I am actually wanting to paint coral, it may seem silly, but I don't actually want to just go back to what I was doing five years ago and say, um, and just sort of repeat that and say, well, it's coral now. Does that make sense? I kind of want to find a new way to say it, a new way of painting coral and making it my own without going backwards to the work that I was doing five or six years ago, because that's not really what I'm interested in doing anymore. It's not really the vision that I want anymore for my art. And so I am trying to find a way to <laughs> incorporate um, my own style of painting into these sort of coral reef pictures. I also want to make sure that I don't just fall back into that cliche of painting coral reef. I don't want to paint stereotypical bright coral reefs with fish and things and I don't want to be realistic. I want to try and push myself to be a bit more semi-abstract with it. I think I'm, I think I'm waffling but hopefully you get what I'm trying to say here. Anyway, that's what I'm trying to do at the moment. I have done a few things. I'd like, I just showed you pictures of my sketchbook. So that was kind of my starting point and where I'm wanting to go. Uh, but I am sort of still not quite sure what I'm doing with that yet. It's just, it, I don't know. I'm just making it up as I go at the moment. So um, I do want to turn around and show you something that I was working on. I started it last Friday and came back into the studio today and looked at it again and immediately changed quite a lot of it. I don't actually have any pictures of it beforehand, but I have... Um, approached it in a bit more of a loose way than what it was originally. Um, I will turn the camera around so you can see it and then I'll talk about it more. So this is what I'm working on at the moment. This is actually a fairly large canvas. I think it's 120 something by 100. Um, yeah, it's over a meter. Um, and this is sort of where I am at the moment. Obviously this is just like an underpainting stage. It's still a little bit wet as well. So I'm sorry if it gets a bit shiny. This is acrylic paint, but I really want to get Sorry, the light's changing. <laughs> I really want to get like a loose um, underwater effect. I think that the colors that I've got in here are already too saturated. I need to knock them back a bit and then come back in later with just highlights of saturation. So that's something I'm going to change in a minute, especially this one here. That just seems far too um, bright for what it is at the moment. But this is kind of <laughs> the starting point that I'm at at the moment. Uh, working on this and you may think that's a bit crazy of me to go big so quickly but this is how I work things out easier I, I find it painting really small when I'm trying to work out a new idea or a new style I find when I'm I start too small I get really frustrated and so I'd much rather start on a really big canvas like this and be able to just be expressive and um, 
lay a paint up without worrying too much and then you know experimenting and standing back and looking at it rather than working on something really tight and small so that's why I've gone for such a big canvas um, but yes yeah, so this is what I've got at the moment um, let me just get another one that I did as well hang on a second okay please excuse all of the messiness behind but this is another painting that I did when I came back to the studio on Friday now this to me has the feeling that I'm going for, but it's not abstract enough. I was getting a little bit too literal with it. Um, I do really like some parts of it. Like I do like the way that these drips kind of blend into the coral. I like this. Um, I do like these, these patterns and shapes that I have, but to me, it's a little bit too tight and it's a little bit too forced and contrived maybe. And this is what I'm trying to avoid. I don't want it to be, um, this sort of cliche bright coral reef painting if that makes sense I'm trying to go for something a little bit more subtle <laughs> which is weird because I don't paint subtle but I don't know I can't explain what I'm trying to do but hopefully in a few days I'll work it out and I'll be able to show you <laughs> but anyway this is what I'm up to at the moment in the studio okay so one last quick little update this is where the painting was when I finished on this particular day in the studio and I was really happy with it at the stage uh, I think I have been successful in keeping everything quite loose and while it is obviously a coral reef it's still quite loose and brush strokey and painterly and there's not too much detail in the actual coral. I really love that abstract sort of stream of fish that's coming down, those sort of shadows of the fish. I've kept like the shapes of the coral really loose and simple, lots of drips and dribbles, and I'm really happy with how it looks at the moment. Um, I'm going to sort of contemplate it a couple of days and then I'll decide if it's actually finished. But at this stage, I don't want to change anything on it, which is a good thing. Uh, and I'm really happy with it. And I have toned down the colors a bit. It's still bright, but it's not as bright as what was in my sketchbook. So that's kind of what I was going for. So yeah, this is how it looks at the moment and I'm really super happy with it. So that is a little bit of what I have been up to since I saw you last. <laughs> uh, I hope you enjoyed that. Hope you enjoyed seeing my little holiday and some of the things that I've been creating. If you want to see more updated versions of this <laughs> as it progresses, um, it's probably a good idea to follow me on Instagram if you search Claire Bremner on Instagram you will find me um, I tend to sort of show more updates and detail photos on there and I update that a lot more frequently than I upload videos so you're probably more likely to see this thing when it's finished on there but um, I will probably try and remember to video some of it um, for maybe next video next YouTube video that I do so uh, thanks for joining me and make sure you like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video